Hello and welcome to another episode of the Trusted House Painter Academy podcast. I'm your host, Paul Stein, and I've got a confession to make. I am no good at accounting and bookkeeping. And when I started my painting business, I dreaded it. I, oh, I hear my, uh, sorry. <laughs> Let me just start this again. <laughs> I am no good at bookkeep, bookkeeping and accounting. When I started my painting business, I threw all my files into a, a, a shoebox in the bottom drawer and I stuffed it away and it kind of turned into a nightmare. Um, I'm a painter by trade. I love working with people. I love building teams. I love entertaining. I love doing the arts and I don't like doing that accounting work. And I met a man named Kyle Strohschein and he's our guest on our show today. He's from JB Funk Consulting Group here in Victoria, BC. And, uh, you know, learning from him, I have learned how to ship shape my business and it's allowed me a little bit more free time and it's actually grown my business because now I can do what I'm good at. I'm no longer struggling with the things that I hate doing, the things that I'm not good at. So Kyle, welcome to the show. How are you today? Doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on the show, Paul. Cool. Um, Kyle, I guess, you know, I know I, there's a lot of people watching the show right now, a lot of new painters, uh, painters that have been in business. They probably struggle with the same thing I'm struggling. So we had a, a guest on our show last week named Phil, uh, Philip Bassett Covenero, and he was a certified financial planner. And one of the tips he gave on that show was that you need a good lawyer, a good financial planner, and a good accountant. And that's why you're on the show today. So uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show. And we're going to talk about some accounting and basic uh, bookkeeping stuff that you as a painterpreneur can add in your painting business so that you can grow your business and have some more free time. So Kyle, um, let's uh, maybe start off by, you know, introducing yourself, what you do and what your, what, what your business JB Funk does. So I'm an accountant by trade. I graduated from the University of Saskatchewan for all those Rough Rider fans out there. Um, majored in accounting and uh, went off into public practice for a bit, which just means working for a, uh, a firm. So these are the big five firms in Canada, Grant Thornton, you've got KPMG, Deloitte & Touche, Myers, Norris, Penny. And so those public accounting practices are the ones that do tax returns, tax and audit. So I did that for a while and then uh, went into private industry. And that's where I really shine because I really love helping, as you said, Paul, those small business owners that show up with a, book, uh, a shoe box full of receipts and just don't know what to do with them. And so I've uh, just as an entrepreneur myself started uh, my own practice with my partner, Jacob Brody Funk. And that's why it's the name JB Funk um, together. I do um, all the financial consulting side, bookkeeping, accounting, um, a type of, of uh, consulting advisory services that I, that I call it. So that's advising companies on their financials, whereas my partner Brody does uh, more of the consulting from an operational standpoint, organizing the, the corporation to succeed. And so really our, our, our motto is a great bottom line or you don't pay a dime. So we're yeah, so I love, confident I love your services. website. I love how it starts off. And in fact, it kind of resonated with me when you said many business owners often are so busy with the details of running a business, they don't realize they're leaving money on the table. Mm. At JB Funk, Kyle Strohschein and his team clears the way, clears away the noise to give business owners the clarity they need to make big decisions that help them, their company grow. And I think that's very fundamental in the small painting business, which is why you're on the show. So let's start off really fast with why is accurate bookkeeping so important to any business? Yeah. I mean, the, sh the shoe box is, is one method of doing it. And I would say it really depends on, on what you want as, as a small business owner. I mean, do you want your business just to sustain a lifestyle for yourself where you go and just love your trade and, and you're just a one man show? If you're just a, a one man guy, then, you know, the, uh, it's, it's fine to show up with that shoe box and just give it to an accountant at the end of the year and, and he's gonna do it for you. But as soon as you start adding people, it's that complexity communication gets double the amount of complex when you start adding somebody. 
So, um, so keeping your numbers in tight, like for me as a, as a painter, I'd look at the year end and I'd be like, ah, I'll put, do it tomorrow. Ah, I'll do it tomorrow. And at the end of the day, it's just like, give it to my account. And, and I, and I really don't know where I'm going with my business. If I made money, if I lost money. Yeah. Um, and I think you've talked to me about this before that just keeping your numbers intact is the key to growing a business. Cause it's not about painting. It's about running a business, right? So your question was accurate. Why keep accurate numbers? Yeah, that's right. Why keep accurate? Yeah. My, my tips are, are no year numbers, right? So you want to, you want to know if you had a profit at the end of the year and just understand that if you produced 500,000 in revenue, benchmark standards say that you should earn at least a 10% profit. So that's $50,000 in profit. Now you should pay yourself a wage in there. So if you won't pay yourself a wage of 50 grand, you know, your profit's going to be 50 grand. That's a hundred grand. That's a pretty good income for a, for a, for a painter. Mm -hmm. And you can work the numbers backwards. So if you, if you don't know the numbers, if you don't know the accuracy, then you don't know if you're making profit, then you should just get a job because the liability of owning a business and running this enterprise just isn't worth it. Yeah, it is. It is really from stepping from a technician into a, an entrepreneur or manager, right? So you yeah, say you got some what, tips what the, for the people. Go ahead. What a lot of those technicians don't understand is the liability, the risk involved of running a business. So if you understand that you've got to make a profit to pay for that liability or that potential liability, that's why it's important to know the numbers. But, but yeah, my tips that I had, uh, had outlined for this, that I have a blog post about is, is really number one, the most basic tip that every small painting business should, should have is a separate bank account for your business. And what does that do? So this is just a simple step that any business owner can do right off the, the get go is it organizes, it makes it easier for your bookkeeper or accountant at the end of the year, even if you don't have that shoe box of receipts, at least we can pull the data together to produce a financial statement and to file your taxes because it's assumed all those expenses that run through the business, all the revenue that run through that bank account is business related. Yeah. So it will save us time and bookkeeping. And so we don't have to look at all the, the personal stuff in there and, and weed that out. It's a really yeah. important to get that, that, that business bank account. Yeah. I will mention from, you know, I've been doing it for quite a while that it's really important to separate your personal assets and liability from your business assets and liability so that you don't blur the lines because the tax man don't really care. <laughs> so it's important yeah. to separate those, those two lines. So yeah. I guess the first tip would be having a separate bank account for your business. I've even heard yeah. of having a third bank account where you put, uh, I think Philip Bissett Covenero in our last podcast mm. talked about putting 10% into a completely separate bank account and just leaving it there for your taxes. Would that be a good idea? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Savings account, even uh, at the least. I mean, I personally, any, any draws I make from my company, I set aside that into a separate account right away. So that's a great tip from a financial planner that, that you just got to be religious about. Okay, cool. What's the, what's the secondary tip that you would, you'd recommend for any painterpreneur watching? Yeah. So number two is organizing the data. Bookkeeping is really a data. What it is, is a data management system. You know, it's, it's an age old way of, of organizing that business data. And yeah. so there's four main sources of data in your business. Number one is revenue. Number two is expenses. Number three is assets. And number four is liabilities or debts that you owe. So assets are the things you own. Liabilities are who you owe money to. I see. So we talked a little bit earlier, Paul, about the financial statements and whether a business owner or a painterpreneur or a small business owner needs to know the financial statements. Now it says, I mean, you don't need to know those, those terms or the, the lingo, but you need to understand revenue. So that's your income. So what yeah. comes in the business? And the way, I mean, if, even if you could take that shoe box 
and have one shoebox for each of those categories, I'd be a lot of happier because that's that's at least organizing it somewhat. But if you want to get more sophisticated and and grow your your business, you could, you know, that revenue you can have painting. You know, how much revenue did you earn from commercial jobs? How much revenue did you own for residential jobs? Just having that much more organization is important to understand. Okay, well, if I had this much from residential, geez, that business is growing. You can see the trend over time. I see. I see. So it's more about keeping really kind of strict data so you can see where you're doing well, where you're doing bad. Exactly. Would you recommend having like a simple spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet kind of laid out and with tabs just so that Well, that's my third data? tip, which is to use a digi the digital tools that are out there. I mean, it's they're just so cost effective nowadays for $25 a month. You could buy QuickBooks online and use those digital tools to uh, organize that data for you. Okay, so it gets rid of the spreadsheets. You just hire someone to set it up for you, I'd recommend, or if you do have the, the wherewithal to do it yourself, you could do it, but it's really important to set it up properly the first time, even if you're using that spreadsheet. If you don't know how to organize the data, like myself in my personal life, my wife is an amazing organizer. She can lay out a house perfectly and I can keep that house tidy. But for me to step up and, and organize it from scratch, I get I get lost. I, I just don't have the, the knowledge that she does on how to do that. But once it's set up properly, then it's not that hard to manage and organize. So what are some of these easy tools that you'd recommend that are out there online that you know people can download or purchase at a reasonable rate, reasonable cost? Yeah, so the accounting software that's out there, I recommend QuickBooks Online. It's a cloud-based accounting system. Uh, super easy to use. It's got an app. Um, the other tool, so, so that organizes so it kind of goes in hands with, with tip number two about organizing your data. So when you're looking at revenue, really an easy way to organize the revenue is, is by automating your, your income. So if you get paid by PayPal, that's super automated. You don't have to chase customers down for checks. You don't have to chase them down for cash. If a check comes in, you've got to know who it was from. So by using a PayPal or even email money transfers, that will talk to QuickBooks and we can mm. tell where that, that customer came from. So there's probably painting industry software out there as well. Um, I know of one called Jobber, but I don't know, Paul, if there's any industry specific painting software, which will manage that revenue and exactly who that invoice was sent to. So those invoices, keeping track of invoices instead of just on a piece of paper with a, a quote book or, or receipt book that you have, using those digital tools can help organize that revenue. Okay, so so Jobber or, or whatever inv uh, invoicing software you have and then a payment software okay. can organize that revenue so we know exactly where it came from and most of these most of these apps have like reconciliation procedures that you can just kind of click a button and it wraps it up. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so that's a, a lingo, a bookkeeping lingo is a reconciliation. And I, and I know that some of my clients, they're just like, what the heck is that? And, <laughs> and I mean, a, a reconciliation just is taking what, what came in the door from money, what money came in the door, what money went out the door. I see. That's all that means. So that's revenue and expenses. So organizing that data, what came in the door from revenue, what went out the door from expenses, and you match those up on a bank statement is what that does for you. Like QuickBooks makes it easier. Um, yeah, so that's using that digital tool to organize the okay, revenue. And then from an expense standpoint, I recommend Receipt Bank or it's called Dext, D-E-X-T. But uh, what, it, what I recommend to my clients is, yeah, managing all those expenses. You go to the paint store, Cloverdale sends you, a re or gives you a receipt. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that receipt? It's tucked in the truck or your shoebox. Yeah. So with Receipt Bank, it just uses your cell phone, 
take a picture of it right away, that automatically gets published to your to your accounting software. You can still look it. That's helpful. That's super helpful. And I'll tell you why, because, you know, in the first few years of my painting business, I would give my accountant or my bookkeeper the actual receipts and they'd come back and say, Paul, there's like seven things that are missing here. Do you have the receipts for those? And I'd have to go hunt my truck or, you know, go back to the paint store and ask for another receipt. So I think that's, you know, automating, if making your process efficient by just taking a picture of it. That's a, that's a wicked tip. That's a yeah. Wicked tip. Yeah. My what drywall. Is that a uh, Dext, D-E-X-T. Okay. Cool. So using software to automate your process with your revenues or expenses, something like QuickBooks even will get you started. It helps bridge that gap between you and your bookkeeper. Is that what I'm kind of hearing from you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, um, so even at the end of the year, your accountant or bookkeeper can lo log in. You can give them a login and they can do it for you monthly. Um, so at the end of the year, it just minimizes the cost, right? Because all of these things have a cost. When you bring a, that shoebox to the accountant, if it's unorganized, he's going to charge you more money. Whereas I see. Nice and organized and tidy, it's going to cost you less. I see. So that's my next question. I guess it's kind of the question with respect to this is um, – at what point should a painting business do monthly, quarterly, annual bookkeeping? Sure. Um, now, if you're a new painter starting up, you're a one-man show. If you've got three guys, if you, you grow into a 10 guys, if you could give a little piece of advice to all the painters out there listening, you know, what is the what is a general accepted principle or a best business practice with respect to doing your, your, month, your monthly or annual accounting? Yeah, you want to know the numbers monthly. So at monthly. the end of the... Yeah, at the end of the month, so this is on my client advisory side of my business, I'll sit down with the business owner, look at the numbers, and I'll produce five numbers for them so they don't have to look at all the, the financial statements. But, but I say they need to know five numbers. Usually in every service-based business, because that's what you guys are operating, there is direct labor. Yeah. There is direct materials. There are overhead wages. So if you have someone in the office that is running the phones, you want to keep that, keep, you want to know that number. So if you pay yourself, how much did you pay yourself? How much did you pay your managers? People that are not directly tied to a job. Mm. So you want to know vehicle costs. What are your vehicle costs every month? <clears throat> Did you spend more than the benchmarks? So that's the value added services that I provide is, is I know the benchmarks in your industry for how much things should cost. I see. And so if you could, and marketing expenses is the last one. So if you're not, if you're spending less, I don't know if you know this, but if you're spending only 5% of your revenue on marketing, you're not growing your business. Ooh, that's an interesting tip. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so if you're just wanting to grow a company, you need to spend at least five to ten percent on marketing. So that is the growth stage, right? So if you're doing five hundred grand a year in, in revenue, spend fifty grand a month on marketing, you're gonna gain market share, you're gonna outspend your competition. Right, because most of them don't know that number. So if you just know the number, you run your business by the numbers, by the margins, actually the percentages. You'll uh, you'll succeed because your competitors probably don't know those. You said fifty thousand a month. If you're making five hundred. Oh, sorry, a sorry, a year, a year. Okay, I get yeah. it. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, for fifty grand, it's gonna blow up. But yeah, because I think one of the big, you know, one of the big aha moments for me was when I realized I'm no longer painting a, a painter, but a business running a painting business. Uh, and you're actually not a painting business. You're a marketing company. <laughs> then yeah. the day you and a, a JB Funk, you're a marketing company. And yeah. if you make cakes or make cookies, or if you're a lawyer or if you're a truck driver, you're actually a marketing company. That's all you are is marketing really. Yeah. yeah. So I appreciate that little tip about uh, putting some money into your marketing. I yeah, guess we'll have to have you. Five. Less Sorry? than five percent, you're shrinking. So it's like, do you want to shrink? Maybe you want that. I don't know. 
Well, I think uh, for a lot of small business painters, uh, word of mouth and referral business is generally how they drive their business. And they get to a point where they find that happy medium of how many referrals and how much output they can they can bring. So I guess if you're not looking to expand your business, you don't need to spend any more than 5%. Would that be a good statement? Yeah, exactly. That's the status quo, right? So I'm 50 grand, that's 25 grand a year. That's 2,500 a month. I mean, that's you know, maybe a, a, a membership to whatever your, your BNI group or your, your business cards, you know, like that's handing out a couple flyers here and there, spending money on print advertising, then a website. I mean, all these things cost money. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing that doesn't cost money is if you join trustedhousepainter.com, it gives you a free painter membership and you get access to local leads. It's a great way. So if you're watching this right now and you're a painter and you, you haven't heard about it, go to trusthousepainter.com, register your free painting company and yeah. grow with the, grow with the uh, people. And it's another way of branching out your social media. There's not one way. One thing I've learned is that with marketing, it's not one thing you do. It's the multiple avenues that you do that actually compound on that. So we'll talk more about that later. But uh, what's another tip that you have for us uh, there, Kyle? Yeah. So higher payroll. I was going to talk about payroll is you said you were frustrated by bookkeeping. I'm sure if you've ever managed a person in your business and then at the end of the month or you bi weekly, they wanted a paycheck and you're like, Oh crap. What, how do I do this? You know, that's a whole new skill set that, uh, I, you have to read up upon. You have to know the current legislation and you know, someone's got sick due to COVID. Now, how do you manage that? So the tip I have here is, is really just outsource it. You know, there's very low cost ways to outsource your payroll to services like JB Funk Consulting. Um, PayWorks is a software based company that will do it for you. Even QuickBooks has software that will, will do the payroll, at least if you did it yourself. I mean, it will help you to, to organize that payroll. And then at the end of the year, you have to file those T4s. So it's a complicated complicated thing and a lot of business owners I find get behind on the tax man with their payroll source deductions. Yeah, it can be kind of complicated, uh, especially with government websites and trying to do it yourself. And it's Friday and the painters want their paycheck, you know, so outsourcing the payroll, does that cost a lot? Is that a big endeavor? I mean, it's it's reasonable uh, for a, a small business. I, I like I ran this number by you again, is, is managing by the numbers. You should allocate 3% of your revenues to accounting and bookkeeping in general. So if you set aside 3% for accounting and bookkeeping, that should cover the cost for all these services that I've described, but for specifically to outsource payroll, it depends on the number of employees you have. I see. Uh, we've got a question from the chat, which is interesting. Uh, how mm -hmm. much should I be setting aside uh, for covering stat holidays, EI, WCB, and such things like that? So 12%. how much, sorry, say again? 12%. 12%. Yeah, of that employee's wage. So if he's at 20 bucks an hour. Set aside 12%. Uh, two bucks, yeah. And that will basically cover now. Now we're we're in Canada right now. Does this does this apply to Americans in America, or is it totally different for each yep. jurisdiction? Or is that just a general guideline that everybody should do? Yeah, I mean, you got four percent vacation pay, um, pay. Yeah, so government taxes that the employer has to remit is probably a little cheaper in the U.S. Say say another four percent there. So Canada a little more, twelve percent. U.S. eight percent. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Um, one of the other questions that we were, we, were, we were talking about before the show was, uh, you said know your numbers. So mm -hmm. let's go into that tip. What do you mean by know your numbers? Now, when I like when I started my painting company, I didn't know my numbers. So yeah. let us know. What do you mean by knowing your numbers? Yeah. So the tips I had was was know the cash flow, um, just what comes in the the business, what goes out at the end of the month, and and you should have a look at the bank account. Okay. <laughs> look at your bank account is, is the simplest way to know your numbers. If you've got cash that's shrinking from four weeks, like measure that on a monthly basis. So if month one, you had zero month two, you've got 10 grand. 
that's the simplest way that your business is growing. So four weeks ago, now you're at, let's say the next month, you're at eight grand, something's wrong, go figure it out. Um, and there's simple things, simple ways to, to, to do this, I, I recommend is like setting up an automated reminder in your phone, check bank account, or uh, if you've got bill payments coming out, you, you should know how much your, expect, your, your normal bill payments are Set a reminder that hey, on the fifteenth of the month, I've got to pay my visa bill. I've got to pay my my uh, suppliers, right? Yeah. So and the, and the, and then the last <laughs> tip is, is know those percentages that I've been talking about. Um, I don't want to give away all my secrets here, but uh, if you know that you produce X in revenue, you should make X in profit based on the benchmarks, right? Okay. Well, that's. Uh... That's really good information. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's important that you do know your numbers, that you do take a look at it. And I think it's important that you set reminders because I don't set reminders and I often forget about paying stuff, which kind of leaves me in a scramble when the bills come in all at yeah. once, right? So uh, I like to see my bank account full and as full as I can. And I think that can be a detriment sometimes because I don't want it to go down and there's bills out there that uh, need to be paid. So that's, that's great advice. Um, there was a couple questions that I, uh, that I had regarding, um, like some do's and don'ts with respect to, um, starting your own painting company, starting your own small trades mm -hmm. company. What are some don'ts? Like, so you've just gave us, given us a bunch of tips, basically do's, yeah. do have a bookkeeper, right. do know your numbers, do know these things. What are some don'ts? Um, yeah, do pay the tax man. That's one thing I did talk about. So don't avoid the tax man, I guess I could say, is the number <laughs> one tip in, in that regard. I've had so many clients that um, have gotten behind the eight ball with the tax man. So that would be my number one don't. Don't avoid the tax man. You know, you've got GST and source deductions, which are directly liable. You're directly liable for it as a business owner. So even if you shut your company down, they're going to come after your. Uh, your truck, so those are, you know, those are state taxes. In other words, pay your state yeah. taxes, right? Yeah. Whatever that is. We're in BC. Yeah. We have a thing called GST. I'm sure yeah. it's like that everywhere else. So don't avoid the tax. Man. Great advice. Any yeah. other don'ts when it comes to, uh, you know, accounting, running your business, like, yeah. let's, let's talk about like, let's, let's talk about hiring the right accountant in book. Like, do you need sure. a bookkeeper and an accountant? Can you just get an accountant that does your bookkeeping? What do you recommend? Right. Yeah, so and I use those terms loosely. Accountant, accountant is really a, there's a designated accountant, so someone that is um, really that that designation is only or a non-designated accountant. Whereas I'm a non-designated accountant, so all the designation says is I can do an audit on your business. And usually, audits are for businesses over that are on the stock exchange. So you don't need a designated accountant if you're a small business. I see. Because it does, you know, you're not on the stock exchange, so it's overkill. They just charge you more money. So really, it is just a, a license to print more money. Whereas a non-designated accountant, when you're looking for someone, um, I would say look for a, a look for referrals. Look for a, a company that has. Um, you know, so numbers like I'm a certified professional bookkeeper. So that allow you know, gives you some sense that I've had to pass some sort of bar. You know, I have a Bachelor of Commerce from a university, I've worked in public practice, and just get referrals from that company's past clients. So I guess uh, another do would be make sure you hire the right professional. Don't just hire some mm -hmm. guy off of Craigslist that thinks he's an yeah. accountant. So don't hire random Joe is just like you wouldn't hire a random Joe painter, uh, mm -hmm. hire someone with some kind of designation. And so if you're a small, small business, one or two or three kind of person show, uh, is it smart to hire a bookkeeper and an accountant or would it like, do you hire a bookkeeper more mainly when you start growing your company? So some bookkeepers don't do the tax return at the end of the year. Okay. So then you'll need to find an accountant that does taxes. So I would start with, with an accounting firm or, or someone that does your taxes and right at the outset, hire somebody that is QuickBooks. If you're going to use QuickBooks, 
QuickBooks certified to set up your accounting system. That's my number one do there. Um, okay. Trying to think of some other don'ts. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the do's you can make as don'ts, but yeah. well, like would would say don't don't wait till the year end to do your taxes. Don't exactly. let it overlap. Don't yeah yeah do it monthly. Just um, be organized on a monthly basis. So that makes it easier at the year end. Yeah, we've had uh, one of our co-hosts here on the show is Clay Rock. He talks about being organized all the time and how being organized in your production can help you make more yeah. profits. And one yeah. thing that I find as a painting painter going to a painting business when I started was uh, I was very organized in my painting, but I didn't have the habits for creating the business yes. habits with yeah. such as keeping track of receipts, taking snapshots of your receipts, you know, keeping your your accounting organized. So do keep your accounting organized. Um, there's a, a question in the chat. It might, it was a little bit off, off topic. Uh, now I think it came a little earlier, but it, yeah. the question is, is how would you account for word of mouth marketing? Is there such a thing as accounting for that? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not too sure what the context of that question is, yeah. but how would you yeah, account yeah, yeah. for word of mouth marketing? Yeah. Just know your customer list, right? So if you've got, um, ask your customer, how did you hear about us? Word of mouth. Well, you know that X amount of customers have come from word of mouth existing customer, right? Like you would just have a, you know, some way to track. I've had a, exist. This is a, so I've got word of mouth referrals. I've got Google ad spend. I've got uh, print brochures. So everything should be tracked. So if you know you had a hundred of hundred customers came from word of mouth, just ask the question for your new customer. Say I would account for it that way. I see. I see. Um, so we're going to wrap up the show here pretty quick, but I've got one quick question um, that I think I didn't know this until I hired an accountant and they kind of showed me the way, but what are the most fundamental statements that I, as a business painting business owner should know about? Like you said it earlier, you shouldn't know all the details and the light jargon and this and that, but what should I know as a painting business owner? Yeah. So the income statement is where you'll live and die. So knowing those revenues versus expenses and then managing that by those, those numbers. So your direct labor comes off the income statement, right? So your income statement is, is all your income and all your expenses. So on the revenue side, how much did I produce from residential commercial on the expense side? How much did I, I spend in labor? So break it out on that income statement and you'll be, and then you'll learn a little bit about gross profit versus growth net profit and yes. gross margin, net margin kind of things like that. It'll kind yes. of show you what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. What's another statement, accounting statement I should become familiar with. So the cash flow statement is something you, you hear about, which is, is really just taking how much cash you start and what are your, what, how, when do your expenses come out? of your account and then I you can organize your, your cash spend. So one of my clients asked me the other day, um, I want to rent some office space. He says, I want to spend $3,600 a month on this, on this rent. And I looked at his cash flow statement and I said, if you do that, you're not going to have any cash left. <laughs> so you could spend 1500. And he was like, Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. And I went and rented an office for 1500. Otherwise, you would have spent us, you know, three grand a month on this office. So, wow. so the cash flow statement will tell you what what cash is is leaving. So cash is still king, not Bitcoin. <laughs> there you go. Any other any other statements? Any other well, budget? So so a budget is a very important statement, although it's not a formal year end statement. Um, I set up a budget with my clients which is a forecast looking into the future. So um, if we can take a look at all your projections, what do you expect to do in revenue? And then what do you expect your expenses to be? Now we can set that up on a monthly basis and measure against the budget. I see. So, very so basically three or four statements that I should kind of yeah. become familiar with and look at whenever my bookkeeper accountant does my taxes 
take a look at them you know monthly, take a look yeah, at months last every year month this year every month by, by the 10th of the month you should have all that data in your hands so if it's may june the 10th sit down look at your numbers did i make a profit did i have how much cash came out of the business did it grow from last month and then how did i do against the goal that i set against my budget mm. So what I'm hearing is I need to make some serious habit changes in my life if I want to start a painting company or if I want to grow my painting business. That's you essentially what I'm hearing. Yeah, if, if, it's, if you want to grow, you need to do these things. If you don't want to grow, don't do them and just continue on. Like that's, these are things that are hard. And that's so, life. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So I just want to finish up with talking about you and JB Funk Business Consulting Group. Um, yeah. Do you take all sorts of clients from America, from the US, from Canada, from everywhere? Yeah, absolutely. We can help American Canadian businesses. Uh, accounting and bookkeeping, like I said, is a management system. So it works anywhere. And it's, as long as you know the, the principles, it'll work. Um, yeah, so we do anywhere. What was your the other part of that question? Uh, the my question was, um, well, the Talk question about was about us. Yeah, let, let, let me know sure. about your services. If there's any painters out there that are interested in using your services, your bookkeeping, sure. your accounting services, yeah. um, where can they find you? Yeah, so there's there's two streams of our company: the financial services side, and then the coaching or consulting side. So if you're looking for someone just to offload those back office um, tasks, then we'll take that on. Um, if you really want to expand your business and grow, then we have a consulting and coaching process, which is just implementing a strategy from the outset. So looking at your creating a vision, helping you to create that vision for your company. Where do you want to be in 10 years from now? So we'll work, work with you, lock each other in a room for eight hours, create that vision and that business plan so that you know where you're going. And then we'll measure against that every quarter. So we'll hold your hand through that process. So define the vision, get traction on the vision, stay disciplined to that vision through simple tools that we'll put into your business. And that's, that's great advice. The, that's, that's, that's called really the EOS good. process is what we call it. The entrepreneurial operating system, which is by Gino designed by Gino Lickman. So we are uh, EOS implementers. So we implement the entrepreneurial operating system. So if you want to learn more about that, go to jbfunk.ca and, um, or email us at service at jbfunk.ca and we can, uh, to talk more. We'll have a free half hour consultation. Talk more about you and your business. Yeah, I've got to say it's 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 challenging sometimes, you know, as a small business owner, you know, having going beyond your comfort zone and actually looking at what that looks like to outsource it. But believe me, if you don't do that, you'll be stuck in a dead end life. It'll be a ceiling to what you can do because you can't do everything as a business owner. You've got marketing, accounting, finance, you've got HR, you've got hiring, firing, you've got sales conversion. You've got, there's so many things that you can do and you'll, you, it'll distract you from being a very good painter and doing what you, what you make money at. So talking to someone like Kyle, uh, outsourcing, having a consultation with a bookkeeper or uh, an accountant near you, uh, so worth your time, get out of your comfort zone, build some new habits as a business owner. And I think you'll be very successful as a painting company. Um, Kyle, is there any other, you know, any other last tips or any pieces of advice or, you know, any I like, what, I like what you said there, Paul is, is know the operations. I mean, that's, that's what you're good at, right? That's what I'm good at. Yeah. Yeah. You're good at operations. So just focus on sales and operations, outsource the rest you'll be successful, you'll grow, you'll know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. So You don't know what you don't know, right? And that's where miracles happen. So I guess for a painting company who would might want your services or any other bookkeeping services, they should be looking around the 3% of the revenue. Is that correct? Is that Would that yeah. be a general 
correct statement exactly. as to what yes, they should be spending? That's a, great, that's a great number that I go by. If you wanted to hire me tomorrow, I'd look at your revenue, say how much money did you did you make last, did you produce in, in sales? And this would be a good budget number to start with. I mean, it does depend if, if you're already organized, you know, you've already, if you don't have a shoe box, it might be cheaper. So yeah. So if you're organized but, a little bit. Yeah, but but budget set aside three percent for account. I mean, that doesn't sound like much, right? But at the end of the yeah, absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's gonna you're, it's 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 there's two things. It's also about making more profits in your business, but it's also about making more time. And if you're spending your weekends yes. rumbling through papers, which I did for my first year, every month end weekend is papers scrambling, looking on my truck dashboard and you watching the show, you're the same. It's, it's no, no difference. <laughs> so one thing I learned from, from Kyle and from other professionals around me is kind of break that comfort zone, outsource things that you're not good at and stick to what you're good at and build your team around you. Thanks. And so Kyle, I, I really want to thank you for being on the show today. Give us some advice. I got a lot of you know tips and pointers from you about accounting, about um, bookkeeping, what to do, what not to do. And I'd love to have you on the show again. And, sure. you know, we'll talk a little bit more about your EOS, Entrepreneur Operating System, where you talk more about leadership development, yes. visualizing your the future and, and planning for that, which is also that'll important. Be, that'll be my business partner, Brody. You can chat about that too. So That's awesome. And I just want to thank you again, Kyle, for being on the show. So if you're watching the show right now and you like what you see, share it on social media. Post on Facebook, Instagram, wherever else you're kind of uh, on social media. And if you're a painter and you want more information about Trusted House Painter and the membership that we offer, go to you can send us an email at support at trustedhousepainter.com or you can just go to trustedhousepainter.com and you can join for free. It's a free membership. It helps you grow your business. And we also have this academy that we're building on the side, which helps you learn a little bit more about yourself because at the end of the day, your business, I believe, can't be anything that you are not. So if you build yourself and you work on yourself, your business will, will also grow. So Kyle, thanks again for being on the show. And uh, if you've got anything, let us know at support at Trust House Painter. We'll have you get on the show, Kyle, and stay tuned for our next show next week. Thanks again, Kyle. Thanks, Paul. See you later.